My dearly beloved in Christ, this past Friday, we celebrated a very important feast day, the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And today, the Sunday following the Feast of the Sacred Heart, we have a continuation of that theme of the love and the mercy of our Divine Lord. He tells a parable, a story about a man, a shepherd, who had 100 sheep. And losing one of them, he left the 99 and went in search for that which is lost. And when he found it, he brought it back to the fold and he gathered his friends and said, Rejoice with me because I have found the sheep that was lost. What a beautiful parable. One that conveys to us, at least in a faint way, the love, the infinite love of our Lord for each of us. And in particular, his love with, for sinners. Our Lord told this parable after the Pharisees had said to him, you dine with sinners, you associate with sinners. And at the conclusion of the parable, our Lord said, so shall there be rejoicing among the angels of God more over one sinner who repents than over 99 just who have no need of repentance. When our Lord appeared to St. Margaret Mary, revealing to her the love of his sacred heart, he showed her an image of his heart with flames coming out from it. And the heart encircled with the thorns, symbolizing his passion and death, all that he suffered because of us, because of that vehement love for us. And he said to her, showing her this image, Behold this heart, which has loved men so much and is so little loved in return. How sad that we human beings do not repay this tremendous love of our Lord for us. Do not repay it as we ought. So let us reflect today upon the love of the Sacred Heart and all that that means or should mean for us and consequently the love that we should have in return for our Lord. Our Lord's love is seen in the sacrament of penance, in his forgiveness. And what is so amazing is that there is no sin too great for our Lord to forgive as long as the sinner is repentant. Again, as our Lord said, there shall be more joy among the angels of God for one sinner who repents than for 99 just who have no need of repentance. In fact, we find Almighty God saying, this is found in the book of Isaiah, the prophet in the Old Testament, speaking for God, he said, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be made white as snow. And though they be as crimson, they shall be white as wool. In other words, God is able to forgive and delights to forgive even the greatest sins. So we should never have a doubt for the mercy of our Lord or his willingness to forgive as long as we are truly repentant and do what we must to make a good confession, to have the firm purpose of amendment, to strive to amend our lives. But not only does our Lord forgive, he goes over and above that and he forgets. Once again, there's a quotation from Isaiah the prophet that I will no longer remember your iniquities. And that's very important because sadly we human beings, we can say we forgive, but we never forget. Or at least we should, I should say we find it very hard to forget. But our Lord forgives and forgets. And we should imitate that. We should not harbor a resentment toward anyone who has offended us, just as our Lord forgives and forgets 
us, forgets our sins, forgives our sins, and forgets them in his love for us. So this is the love of the sacred heart. And again, going in search of the one that is lost. And I would like to mention briefly a poem. I'm sure some of you at least have heard of it. Um, that, that comes to my mind when I think of this thought that our Lord is like the good shepherd who goes after the sheep that is lost. And how does he go after us? He pursues us by his grace, by our conscience to change, to repent, to come back to him. Our Lord doesn't just forgive us when we go to him and ask forgiveness. He pursues the sinner. He doesn't just, just say, well, sad that that sinner has rejected me. Too bad for him. No, he goes after the sinner. And the poem I'm re referring to is called The Hound of Heaven. It was written by an English poet named Francis Thompson, who was born around 1850. And this young man was, his father was a convert to Catholicism, so he was raised in the faith. And his father was a doctor and wanted him to be a doctor. So he went to medical school. And after six years, he quit and gave himself completely to writing. Had tremendous talent for writing, poetry and prose. But sadly, due to a nervous condition, he started taking what they would take in those days, opium. And he became addicted to opium and was, became homeless, lived for three years on the streets in London. Finally, he published one of his poems in a newspaper. And a couple, a married couple who were publishers, saw it and were very impressed. They got in touch with him and they published his first book. Then they took him into their home and took care of him. He spent the remaining years of his life writing. He died in 1907 uh, at the age of 47, almost 48. But this particular poem, what impresses me, first of all, is just the title, The Hound of Heaven, who, of course, is our Lord. So if you think of a hunter who has a hound or a pack of hounds, and they pursue relentlessly their prey until they finally catch up to it and lead the hunter to the prey. And again, he uses that, excuse me, uses that analogy for our Lord, that he is like a hound pursuing us. I want to read just the first few quotable lines of this poem G.K. Chesterton was very impressed by it, as were other Catholic writers. It has been referred to as the greatest religious poem in the English language. I fled him down the nights and down the days. I fled him down the arches of the years. I fled him down the, lab the labyrinthine ways of my own mind. And in the midst, midst of tears I hid from him and under under running laughter. And it, it goes on and it says that he was not only pursued by our Lord, but he speaks of his feet, those strong feet that followed, followed after, but with unhurrying chase and unperturbed pace, deliberate speed, majestic instancy, they beat, and a voice beat, more instant than the feet. Quote, all things betray thee, who betrayest me. So he's saying that was like the voice that he heard in his head. Everything betrays you because you're betraying me. You've rejected me, so don't be surprised if this world fails you. And Francis Thompson was uh, became, became, or if he wasn't before, a very devout Catholic. He died of tuberculosis. But the point here is that our Lord doesn't abandon even sinners who have rejected him. He pursues them. Sadly, there are those who are still obstinate and deaf to his voice, 
to his pleadings, to the grace that pursues them. And they still reject it and choose to live apart from our Lord. Let us appreciate and, and reflect upon and love the Sacred Heart for his mercy that he forgives and forgets and that he hasn't abandoned us and that he continues to pursue us by his grace. But let us not be deaf to his voice. Let us not reject the grace. Because if we reject it, who knows that he may one day stop pursuing us. We are the sheep that was lost. Let us return to the good shepherd of our souls. Let us love the sacred heart. And let us strive to be like him, to forgive others who have offended us out of gratitude for our Lord who so lovingly forgives us and brings us back to his embrace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.